This is Burn the Ship. We are officially recording. Um, our goal of Burn the Ship is to connect entrepreneurs with professionals that can help you go all in on your business. Uh, we talk to people that walk the walk and talk the talk in business every day that have been through those challenges, know what they do well, know what they learned from. And we try to kind of quantify that for the rest of the people that are listening. So without stealing your thunder, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your business? Absolutely. Thanks. Um, my name is Britt Agi, and I own a company called Agi Images. We focus on media content from videography, virtual tours, photography, uh, drone. Uh, and we also have a uh, practical application where you can use measurement tools with our software. So it's um, very fun. It's a very creative job. And every day is different. Sure. And so tell me a story. You know, kind of tell me how, because we've been talking for a long time, and your story is pretty unique. Your skill set is pretty unique in itself. So tell me a story like how you got to where you are right now in your business. Yeah. Uh, so... I started my whole life. I've been a musician. Um, I went to school for music composition and theory and music engineering. When I moved back to Atlanta right after college, I was working at recording studios. I was designing live setups and, and studios. And I was spending a lot of time in rooms with no windows. And so I, for me at the time, it wasn't really uh, what I was looking for. But it really got me knowledgeable about tech and really into technology. So then I went in and I started doing um, outside sales where I was designing uh, low voltage um, setups for custom homes. So automation systems and um, sound and so kind of using some of the skill sets. But for me, the outside sales job that I was part of, the company had some issues, right? And uh, there were things that they did and their philosophies in business that I just really didn't agree with. At the same time, I also happened to be pregnant. Mm. And um, so I decided um, when I had my daughter that I was going to take a little bit of time to kind of be a mom and try to recalibrate and figure out what was important to me as far as career-wise. And I, you know, it was a big jump for me because I was making a lot of money in outside sales. And I realized that that wasn't all fulfilling for me. It was... I was under someone else's schedule. Um, I was working for another company's mottos that I didn't agree with. And so uh, I took some time off and I really thought about what was the most important thing for me. And it all boiled down to the thing that will make me happiest is if I can be creative every day. And I had a lot of really, really good skills. I've always done video editing. I had always made videos for fun and written songs and created content. And it just, I had always done it for people for free. People had asked me to do stuff for years and years but I just never thought to charge for it. And um, right before the pandemic, I just pinpointed that one trait as creativity. And so how can I make money being creative as my primary motive? And um, so I started uh, learning everything that I could about the in-depth of camera work. Uh, I got my commercial drone pilot license. Um, I invested a lot of gear into some uh, photography equipment and 3D cameras, started working with VR and kind of looking at where the technology was going to go. Um, Because I wanted to blend creativity, but also be realistic about the state of technology. Sure. And, you know, okay, was it AI or is it VR? Is it a mixture of both? Like, what's going to be the future? And, um, yeah, so I just took a really big leap and it paid off. Uh, And now the business is, is thriving and I get to do creative stuff every single day. Every day is totally different. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of how I got started. It's it's really just a mixture of I kind of already had these skills, and I just decided to take a leap into creating a business from them. So. Sure, absolutely. And so you're working with a lot of commercial clients now. Like, what's kind of the makeup of your business? Yeah, so I, I do a lot of stuff with uh, senior livings. That's a, that's a big one for me in that industry. It's a big growth industry, too, which is why I like kind of focusing in there. Uh, I do a lot with hotels, resorts. I work with a lot of architects. So there's... Um, Yeah, it's really fun to go into a five-star hotel and get to scan all their suites that I'll never get to stay in. (laughs) One day. Yeah. One day. We both will. Not together. (laughs) One day we will both have that opportunity. And I think it's because of the, um, you know, you know why what you do. You know why you do what you do. You know, you know why the creativity aspect is so important of you. You know what your skills are and you know how to monetize those things. And I'm kind of in the same place. You know what I mean? Like, this where we are is kind of that merger of creativity and outside sales for me. So I relate to you. Um, so what are your goals moving forward? Kind of where your business are right now? Like, what do you see kind of the path of growth? Yeah. So anything with VR is kind of 
questionable right now, right? Of of and 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 basing a company around technology can also be kind of scary in some senses because technology is ever changing. Absolutely. So even two days ago, Apple released, you know, yeah, thirty five hundred dollar VR headset. Right. Yeah. But you know, when Apple tends to release something, it's typically. Uh, perfected in a lot of senses right and it can change the way that we think about that technology so you know the phone the cell phone existed but the iphone completely changed the way that society viewed that piece of technology so you know i don't know if that's going to be the case with their headset but it could really change the way that we view work from home scan spaces um even like you know uh, envisioning you know wearing this while you're watching a game and being able to pick you know where you're sitting uh you know watching a soccer match or uh, football. So the amount of spaces, spaces that could be scanned or utilize the technology that I'm already doing with this new headset is um, interesting. And I don't exactly know where that's going to go yet, but I do think that that is an interesting aspect for the future. I also really am all in on senior livings. For me, not only is it a really a growth industry, you look at baby boomers and people that are going to need these. Oh yeah. It's a facilities. trillion dollar industry. Oh, and you know, before I went into a senior living, I really didn't know what to expect. I, I think I just pictured this like brown carpeted yeah. nursing home. They're like five star resorts. Oh no, yeah, uh huh. The first place that I, the first time I ever went to one was in East Cobb off of Johnson's Ferry. I wish I could remember the name of it, but my I had I was the president of a master networks group that met there, and it was the sickest place. Like the the inside of those places are insane. That's why you spend a hundred thousand dollars a year there, as you know, you're putting your your mother in there as your senior living solution and you spend you know eight thousand dollars a month there and uh they're insane no, yeah they're insane i mean it's no reason that the same people that hire me to do hotels you know the same kind of uh product is yeah. for senior yeah, livings it's similar it's allure to it yeah yeah so I, I do see a huge growth in that and even the way that they're beginning to uh, pitch using vr headsets um it's it's really really interesting kind of in that industry so And there's also a rewarding factor. I get to talk to a lot of people. I do a a ton of like testimonial videos and commercials and, you know, documentary style uh, projects and being able to talk to people about their life and really capture that. um, It's it is fulfilling as well. And so it's a really cool industry to be in. And it allows me to really blend, you know, all the things I'm kind of going for. Um, But obviously, I still like all the other uh, fields that I'm in, but yeah, I sure. think senior living is the the one. No, but that's dope though. I mean, if you find the place where you can um, combine the things that are most important to you, and you can boil that down to three or four words, you know what I mean. You're talking about creativity, um, leveraging that ability for outside sales, and still you know providing pieces of content that bring value to the people that are paying you for them. Like I think that you know any time that you whatever wherever that lands you in your business is a really good a good way to kind of reverse engineer what you do on a day-to-day basis. So yeah. um, kudos to you. Seems like you're very happy doing what you're doing, which is very, very important as well. So uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you're being here with us today. It means a lot. At the beginning of this journey, what would you say that you were doing really, really well that kind of catered you to success? Well, I think having no fear helps. Mm. You know, just kind of being like, hey, look, I'm going all in on this. And... um <laughs> Good or bad. <laughs> That's learned behavior too. That it definitely is. Like we we've talked about that before about the lack of fear. Do you think that you learned that through like the musical side of yourself when you were younger? Well, I, I, I think just in general, yeah, it's definitely like a and I guess the athlete side of things, too, because this is a, that's kind of the frame that I've had that same conversation in this college athletes that own businesses that come in here, too. And they're like that that lack of fear that I developed just from having to step up on that main stage from an athletic perspective helped me, you know, put myself in gear for the business side of things. Well, yeah. But, you know, playing a big show or, um, you know, in, it being in a, you know, state championship or, you know, playing on an all state team like there there are things that make you really really nervous and i think a lot of people feel that nervousness and they say i can't do it Mm -hmm. it's too much i don't i hate feeling this way and i've always felt if i feel that way i'm probably doing something right Mm -hmm. because it's either gonna yeah okay it might crash and burn what's the worst that's gonna happen i mean when you're talking about a business yes it could be financial failure and (laughs) divorce and who knows right but really um if you don't take that step and you don't you know, face your fears and feel that nervous energy, then you're never going to experience anything great. You're just always going to be kind of, I think, mediocre 
in terms of just like what your success is. Um, or, and maybe, and I think there are some people that are totally fine with that. They're totally fine with having a nine to five for their whole life, having a very set salary, you know, having, if pensions still existed, you yeah. know, um, and that, but that is just not my personality type. That is just never what I thought I, I would always rather take a risk and be happy, have a higher financial gain. I mean, I don't think we can say too, that that wasn't a motivation that as a business owner, if I'm successful, there is um, a chance to have a higher financial gain than if I were to go work for someone else. Sure, absolutely. And so obviously that's a motivator as well. And I think it it's one of the big introductory motivators to it. It you Once you see the money and things like that, once you see kind of the power that you can have over people and things like that, like even though those are so important at the beginning, it always manifests itself in a different way where you're like, Oh, well, I'm also making money, but the creativity is so important to me. The control is so important to me. The the ability to to allocate my time the way that I want is so important to me that it, it's not that uh, the money is a bad thing. You know, the desire for the, the monetary gain is a bad thing. It's just that it almost always, you know, for people that are successful, especially transitions into something else. Yeah. Well, I think my mentality really shifted when I had a daughter, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people that have had kids. I know you just had a kid. Mm-hmm. I think your mentality shifts a little into where like I want to spend time with her when she's little. Absolutely. And I don't want to miss something because I have a boss who doesn't share that same value as me or, and I'm not saying that all jobs are that way, but yeah, being able to have the flexibility and at certain times being able to put my family, you know, put the business on not the back burner, but in, in the sense of, Hey, it's slow season or you know what? This is way more important. My family is way more important this moment. So, I mean, it's more important always you no, know, yeah. to be clear, but just being able to have that, that freedom was a really, really big motivator for me. Sure. Yeah. Oh and no, I get that. I get that. It's very, very important. Um, what did you suck at at the beginning? What did you learn from? Oh, geez. <laughs> a lot of things really. Um, I think, one of the things I didn't realize when I started the business is I had all this creative stuff. You know, I was so great at Adobe and I had edited and I was good at audio and I just had a really creative vision. That was such a high skill set for me. But then everything else, I guess I just didn't really think about like how much I would have to learn quickly. Um, the biggest one for me was really like managing finances, mm-hmm. I think. And it, from my business perspective, not like a personal finance thing. Um, and, and understanding, yeah, and, and all the, like the legal stuff that I had to do with, you know, with insurances and, and working with the county and there's just a, there was a really big learning curve, um, in, in that, that aspect of it. And, but now that I've learned it, it's like, you could just do it a million times, right? Yeah. Oh no, a hundred percent. And that's exactly what the people behind the camera are feeling is like, once you tackle it that first time and you kind of see the full picture you can kind of grasp it it doesn't feel so overwhelming and you can kind of replicate those things so no yeah i think that's learned behavior as well um i think that just speaking to your case specifically it's easy for that high skill set also to be hindering to your business and i'll kind of elaborate on what i mean by that right like so you're very talented in all things video specifically you know from before the camera turns on in pre-production to post-production to editing and releasing a final product, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know that that's probably a $10,000 a month job for some network or some podcast company or some whatever, right? Well, then you you have to take that value in your head and you have to make people see that value for themselves too is like, hey, I'm really, really good at this. Like you're hiring one of the best. You're hiring a a top 1% of people in my field as far as my skills go. And you have to figure out how to relay that information in a way that people understand the value of and understand what they're getting out of it. And I think that's easy to be a weakness. And it seems like you kind of made it one of your strengths, right? Like from that outside sales experience, from understanding the the value of your particular skill set and from a service perspective, like it seems like you did that very, very well of like, crafting what that message looks like and making people understand that you know here's what i'm good at and here's why that is so valuable to you i definitely think having a sales background it was essential Mm. because i think i love how you said that too it's not important it's essential you will have to do sale if you're the business owner you will do sales for your entire life Mm -hmm. it is 
it's at every networking meeting it's at every dinner you go and meet a friend it's it is you're not selling to your everyone mm -hmm. but it is a part of who you are and your business and you should be very proud to talk about that you're building something and you need to feel comfortable pitching absolutely and asking for the clothes and these are things that you have to do or your business will fail. Mm -hmm. You can't expect people to just give you their business. You have to win it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think having that mentality did really, really help with the creative side. One of the first things I did when I started the business was I spent a really long time on research of pricing and you know figuring out where I stood um, because it isn't just like a service. Yeah, it's not a commoditized type of thing. Right. Even though that some pieces of technology out there would love for you to believe that it is not you know there there's not ai yet that can deliver that final product the way that you can for right. you you know what i mean well especially yeah because i do a lot of interviews too and one of the biggest um, benefits of using me is i can get a lot of emotion what emotion you're going for then i can tailor the questions to kind of get that emotion um for whatever marketing material you're looking for and that's not something a computer can do mm -hmm. right it's also hard to say how much that cost. So oh, yeah. I did a lot of research on like what I thought my time was worth, what my competitors are doing, where I fall in the competition, right? Am I good, better, best? Which one am I, right? Which, what product am I offering? And then, yeah, coming up with, with packages and, and pricing that was really, um, easily absorbed by the industries I was going after. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. And makes sense based on what because another thing that we talked about too is like you're not just delivering one product it's not like a one service one and done type of things there's a lot of there's a, a lot of different facets to that that end product that you deliver to someone to be able to kind of fuel their business that you know you you take a very it's like you give away 10 things and then they pay for one thing and that price includes all the 11 things you know what i mm -hmm. mean and like that it's a very sharp way to do business you know because you're you're kind of giving away what's free and then you're honing in on the fact that i am so valuable at doing this one thing that i do so well that people understand that people people you know businesses are used to paying for stuff yeah it's not going away you know they might be a little bit less used to writing checks than they used to be maybe not in your case but um you know they're used to paying for stuff and as long as you can articulate that value and then ask for the clothes, you know, the, the sales background will carry you a long, long way. As long as you can render your product, you know, I could go, you know, I could go sell a roof right now. It's about all I could do. Right. That would be about the end of that process for me, but I could definitely go sell one. I could go ask enough people that somebody would say, yeah, I'll let you replace my roof. That would be a terrible mistake. But, um, no, I understand that. That makes a lot of sense. I'm also a different, I was always a different kind of salesperson. I think that there's like, my husband was in sales for a very long time and he is, very, very good at it in the sense of, you know, coffees for closers, like that mentality. Mm -hmm. And I've always had... Have you watched the, that whole movie, by the way? No, I've only seen that scene. That's the best scene by far. Trust me, the movie goes downhill from there, but it's a good movie. Okay. Well, it's I like a really Alec Baldwin, movie. so maybe yeah. I'll try it. Um, he, he he has that kind of like traditional corporate sales mentality, and I, it's so great. I mean, he's great at his job. For me, my sales tactic has always been you know what, I'm just going to be honest. And if we're not the right solution, that is fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I would rather get a client. I am the right solution. We are a good fit together than get a huge deal, but I'm making all these things work. I'm having, that, cause that's so Peace stressful. Piecemealing it together after the fact. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, then the client's probably not going to like it anyway. Yeah, that would be me with the roof household. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so having that mentality too, and being able to pick clients that I want to work with and saying, Hey, you know what, that business isn't worth it for me. I mean, that's a luxury that comes with success. Oh, I absolutely. Think. But it's, um, yeah, the, the sales background has been really, really helpful. And, you know, I was, I also try to read a lot of books about the sales process and networking and growth and technology and, you know, just trying to expand, you know, your mind is, I think, also important as a business owner. Mm -hmm. And I was, I think I'm like really thankful for where I am with my clients because a lot of them have been long-term clients that I do, you know, large-scale business with, but I'm in a place with them where I can genuinely ask them what they need or ask them where they see the future or, you know, hey, did this work for you? Not really. Okay, well, let's try something else. And it's it's more of like a, a contractor relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And so they'll bring me into their, you know, yearly jamborees to talk about 
emerging technologies to see if it's something that they want to do, you know, in front of their 200 sales and marketing people. And it's, um, it's just like, that's the kind of relationship that you can develop with clients. And that also helps you grow because you can see what they need. I mean, at the end of the day, your business is needs to be designed around what is going to benefit the client, Mm -hmm. not what can I sell? Mm -hmm. Because if you can't figure out what's beneficial to them, then it, you know, they're not going to spend money. If you can't figure out what's beneficial to them, there's probably a reason. Right. You know, that so. makes sense. And that was hard with creativity. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because so. you're combining a lot of different things on that plate. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. And we kind of, we worked backwards. We worked a little bit backwards from you because the creativity was at the forefront of what you were doing. Whereas the process was at the forefront of what we were doing. Meet the people, set up the meeting, you know, go for the clothes rehash after the fact you know finally render a service like and you have to go through those steps that might take seven or eight touches for each person that you make and then that means you have to meet x amount of people a day which means you have to meet x amount of people a week turns into x amount of people a month which turns into x amount of deals right the creativity happened after the fact for us you know this is the creativity side of things the other podcast is the creativity side of things some of the content that we put out it's very business related but still very fun is definitely on the creative side of things and we had to merge that in later so i think we landed near the same near the same place just kind of with a a different path you know what i mean so i kind of speak your language i think it was helpful for me too because so i i play in multiple bands um before this i also ran i was an executive producer of an Atlanta united podcast that was really successful and i saw that if you put something out there that is enjoyable and people want to absorb you will find a way to make money from it. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, social media shows us that all the time, right? Uh, that's a whole nother animal. But I think the podcast really showed me that too because it was something that we did, we started doing it for fun. And it was it was really fun to do and it was a cool creative process that led to press passes, being able to interview players, sitting in on coaches meetings, sponsorships. Like there were a lot of really cool things that came out of a creative endeavor. Um, and it was one of the first ones I had done creatively that had like really worked. Mm -hmm. And so I took a lot of things that I learned from that, that were successful and then applied it into this creative business and yeah, it's worked. Well, where you are is very cool. Congratulations. Just how far you've come because I know that it is a journey. Everyone behind the camera knows that it is difficult. Um, so I would congratulate you on where you are. I hope to do this podcast again in the future and, you know, have a, have a drink and, and laugh about where you were and congratulate for how even more, more further than, than you have come. Um, if people want to buy something from you or they want to bend your ear or they have a question for you, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah. The best way would just be to email me at Brit, B-R-I-T at com. Um, that's the best way. If anyone reaches out to me, I'm happy to talk to anyone really. You know, I've, I've done podcasts before and other things and people reach out and we can set up a zoom call or just have a phone call. Some people it's cause they want to get into a specific industry or yeah, they're trying to start the creative thing. Uh, I've talked to a lot of like graphic designers and, and things like that. So sure. Yeah. Happy well, to talk. I bet they appreciate that people in your industry. They definitely need some, um, guidance in different areas all the time because you have to merge so many different things you're merging the business side and the creative side and what you want to do and how much does it cost you to do it and how much time are you trading for money and all those things so there's there's a big learning curve for what it is that you do can i say uh, one thing yeah absolutely there's I, I think one piece of advice that i got when i started that was i think really changed the trajectory of my business is so i really decided i wanted to do everything the right way and so one of the first things i did was i hired a business coach to kind of talk to me because I felt like the business side, you know, I didn't get an MBA, like let's talk about like what I'm really lacking. And uh, he analyzed the business financially where I'm at, my employees, all these things. And so it was pretty early into the business. And one of the first things that he told me to do was to get a board of directors of people that have skills that I don't have and meet every quarter, be very transparent with your numbers Um, talk to them and then bring large scale problems to them so you can kind of talk through it because when you're in the business and you're working every day it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day versus big picture you Mm -hmm. have to really set aside time to look at big picture and it was probably the best advice that i could have been given yeah um yeah i got someone who's financial on my team i got someone who had an mba i mean yes i knew some of these people some of them were contacts of friends of friends so there's three people on my board and they know my business in and out and they really allow me to talk and think long term and it was such a huge um step for me 
And I, so I think if you're going to be a business owner and you're ready to take that step, if there's skills that you think that you don't know, really analyze what you think that you know and where, you, where you're struggling at and find someone who's willing to meet with you occasionally to help you with the stuff that you're struggling with. Because if you're ignorant of, to think that you just can do everything, it's hard to learn everything. Oh, yeah. You got to have someone that's helping guiding you. And you're going to learn a ton. But if you really suck in one aspect, get someone to help you with that aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just swallow the pride and do it. And Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, building the team and building the, the support center that you need for your business is so, so, so important. I had another guy on the podcast, actually. He gave me a really cool metaphor for that, too. He was like, if you're a runner, right, and your goal is to run one mile at an eight-minute pace, it takes you eight minutes, right? And if you miss it by one second, you missed it by one second. If you miss it by 10 seconds, you missed it by 10 seconds. But he was like, what if you're 10 seconds off of your pace and you have to run 20 miles? He was like, well, the difference between that is, you know, three and a half minutes more than you thought. Well, a lot of times tip people typically miss their pace by a minute or more. Well, then you're, you're near 20 minutes later than you thought. So, like, it's kind of the same metaphor for business where, like, if you don't have the feedback and you're working in the business so hard day to day rendering the actual product that you serve, but you're off your pace by one minute or you're doing something that's bleeding money or you're not doing one portion correctly, it compounds into this thing that becomes so much harder to, to tackle and renovate later in your business. So if you don't have that feedback loop for your business and people that look at your business completely unbiasedly, because that's important too, like finding people that lack the emotional, emotional, emotional attachment to, to the, to the businesses, it's a difficult thing to do, but it's, it's indispensable when you have that resource of people that'll tell you when you're doing things wrong, doing things right. Yeah. No, I mean, for sure. Because they also help me get back on track. You know, you can, I set, um, quarterly They're your pace goals. setters. You yeah. know, they, they, you know, they say, Hey, you're going to have to run this mile 10 seconds faster. Yeah. You know? Well, and I'll set goals for myself and, you know, everyone, every business owner knows, okay, look, I'm doing projects. I'm scheduling people. I'm sending invoices. I got a networking group today. Okay. I got to send out these quotes. Okay. Now I got to do, you know, it, there's all, it's, it's so easy to not work on large scale stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll set like a goal for myself. Like, let's say, okay, I want to revamp the website to do this, or I want to come up with a new sales strategy. And you know, it's something that might take me a day or two. It takes me the whole dang quarter to get it done. Mm -hmm. And I, but I think, you know, having those goals and having someone that's also holding me accountable, you know, not that they're going to be like disappointed if I don't do it, <laughs> but I got to go in there. Maybe and explain, a little, they just might not say it. Out <laughs> right. Yeah. But I got to go in there and explain why I didn't take the time to revamp my website when that was my only goal mm -hmm. for Q1, right. Or whatever it is. And so it really does help you keep a, like a focused eye on like what you need to accomplish and what's important. Yeah, absolutely. No, I completely agree. Well, the way that we always end the podcast, mm -hmm. A little, uh, little nod to our, our name here, Burn the Ship. Have you, You've heard that illusion before. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what it's like to burn the ship on your business, what, what it's like to go all in and why other people should kind of seek that same feeling out. It's scary in a lot of ways. Uh, the fear that I've had when I'm doing a job, jumping into the unknown. I mean, there have been times where a client has asked me to do something and I am like, yep, I've only done it once, but I'm not going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's do it. It's the the fear of the unknown and being able to just kind of jump and just, we say FFO in our house, which is just mm -hmm. go for it mm -hmm. and uh, figure it out. And when you do that and you're successful, it is the most rewarding feeling in the world. And when it's working, it, there is... The satisfaction is just really unmatched. I don't think I'll ever, if I have the option, I will never go back and work for someone else. Mm -hmm. I've now realized that I can make money independently and it's addicting. So. Oh, no, it definitely is. Yeah, I um, I think that the people that I work for right now are very aware that this is the last job that I will ever have. You know, you can only sit through so many Burn the Ship podcasts and listen to people talk about being an entrepreneur without being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we went through that. You know, I'm a partner on the production company side of things and I own that that side of things for us and control and have some creative control on those side of things and it's addicting. It's literally addicting. Like my little brother just graduated college like two weeks ago and he was like, Yeah, I gotta get a job and I was like, Look, if there is anything that I could tell you right now, while you're not used to any money, you're used to being broke. You're used to being completely broke. Start a business. I was like, and you pick what it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it's pressure washing. I don't care if it's detailing. 
I was like, figure out what it is, figure out what it costs, figure out what it's going to take you to run it on a monthly basis as far as cost goes. I'll help you with the marketing. I'll help you with the website. I'll teach you how to create content. As long as you do what I say, we will make money. You know what I mean? I was like, and you can, you can control your destiny forever, you know, and you can learn it now while you have nothing to lose, you know, and he's in the process of figuring that out himself. I don't know what direction he's going to decide if he's going to go get a job and try to make some money soon and cement his life a little bit, because I guess, I guess after four years of college and college football and all those things, you want a little solidarity and foundation to your life. So I don't know what that, that hankering is like for him because you can't simulate it in other people. You you can't create that desire in other people, but it, um, it's a scary thing. It's a, it's definitely a scary thing. And with nobody else, it's triple as scary. I think it's also kind of a personality trait thing. I agree. I think some people are willing to face that fear and go for it, like we were talking about with the, you know, the athletics and stuff, right? Some that scares the crap out of some people. Mm-hmm. But, but I also think there's like this ability to be a business owner. You really, really, really have to be able to learn independently, mm-hmm. and you have to be self motivated, self driven. If you don't have those skills your business is not going to be successful. Are you one of those people that goes to the gym like at five in the morning? <laughs> so actually, surprisingly, I am not a morning person, even though I have to do Me either. a ton of sunrise shoots and sunset shoots. No, I'm a night owl. I'm the opposite. Me too. Um, you don't go to sleep at two in the morning? Uh, yeah, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I edit at me. night. Yeah, it's I'm a picking problem. up what you're putting down. Yeah. You need some blue eyeglasses. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have them. Oh, but that's what I wear too. They do affect my editing, so sometimes I can't wear them. Really? Because they tint if I'm doing a oh, color true. scheme. So yeah, that's true. but uh, I have to wear mine or else I'll stay up all night because it, you know, light keeps you awake yeah. you know, intentionally, you yeah. know, and like I have to wear mine or I'll have a headache the next day and I'll be asleep at five o'clock in the morning. No, I, I can relate. I'm yeah, I'm starting to get better. I've, um, you know, I, I was a college athlete. I've played sports for forever. And, um, but part of that is also working in time to be active Mm -hmm. you know that's a really it's also important as a business owner to take care of yourself physically and mental Mm -hmm. um to be i mean it it can be all consuming owning a business sure but setting aside time for you to actually be uh, healthy is important and so i try to sign up for races so i'm doing a triathlon in august with my brother yeah so. Yeah, the uh, I don't mind a triathlon. I like a good triathlon, and and I enjoy the biking. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody else is like. Yeah, I run, and I'm like, yeah, I don't run. Oh yeah, well, I have, have knee no issues. knee. Yeah, yeah, I have no knee. I'll be run. You can't run with a peg leg. You know what I mean? Like, I understand. I I enjoy the biking though. I um I dislocated and fractured my kneecap, mm. so I I totally get it with the knee stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. no. <laughs> um. Well, good luck on your triathlon. Thanks. Thank you for coming, and giving a little bit of uh, of insight to very relatable aspects of your business and i'm looking forward to see where you go from here and i'd love to have you back on love to stay in contact with you hopefully there's some people in our network that we can connect you to that kind of pushes you pushes you forward as much as we can help um and then if there's anything that you know anyone behind the camera wants to lean on myself or brit for um i think i can speak for both of us to say that we are absolutely willing to to speak with you and help so um thank you for being an asset to the audience um thank you for being a new friend Um, I have enjoyed our conversation thoroughly from beginning to end. So, um, like I said, anything I can do for you, please let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, burn the ship.